evening everybody so this week is all about boat jobs we have a list of stuff that needs to be done and luckily we got the yacht club to give us a spot that we can get it done on instead of trying to do it while we're bouncing on a mooring ball totally yeah and we can pull it i mean as a trailer sailor we can pull it put it on a trailer and do the work but we just think one day we can blast through we got a bunch of little upgrades that we've been waiting for stuff to come so yeah we'll and it's here it is so we're <laughs> gonna share that in this episode we're yeah. excited yeah so uh breakfast. get ready it is work party time it is yeah breakfast get to work go not you me well let's go do it right all right go he is a drill sergeant go <laughs> <laughs> oh shut up there's a hole in the boat Are you super excited, Zoe? What's at the door? What came today? I'm excited, come on. Are you ready? Yeah, we've, we've been, wait been waiting. Months. Months. Months and months. And then this arrived today, and we're so excited. Open the door. Today is measurement day. We have purchased a CDI roller furler, and we are going to measure out our main jib sail uh, so that they can get it made for us uh, to go into our roller furler. So Josh is in the process right now of figuring out what measurements it is that uh, we need to take. Thank God for laptops. And we're going to be playing around up here trying to get our measurements in so that we can send it off to Precision Sail and they can make us a proper jib. What is it that we're getting? A 150? 115. A 115 jib, uh, which is going to make life so much easy to have it in the roller furler instead of having the sail just lay across the deck here. Uh, a lot easier to bring it in when we need to. Quite excited about this. So wish us luck, it's measuring time. Months. Months. And months. <laughs> and it's here. Yay! The wait the... is over, the upgrades are... About to begin. Yes. We're going to learn how to put on a roller furler. Yes, and our new head sail. Yes. And we've had in our garage the furler track mm -hmm. unwound and stretched out for the last month. Something like that. Because you have to do that because it comes coiled up in a box like a spring. And you have to undo it right away. So we've been stepping over it for a bit. And, uh, <laughs> it's gonna be so nice. I can't wait to watch so many videos and how to's and all this stuff. And we are so pumped to install this thing. Yes. Woo! Woo! Okay. I'm scared to even cut this thing open. Don't cut our sail. I promise I won't. <laughs> Ooh, look at that pretty blue sail bag. Mm -hmm. oh. Ow! Watch out. <laughs> Here it comes. Oh Woo! My, yeah. Here it is. That's a huge sail bag. <laughs> it's a huge sail. So what is this one? This is a 115 jib. So it's 15% bigger than our stock jib sail. And it is a firmer. So we are super excited to get this thing installed and set up. We like using that thing and we love downwinding. And it looks gorgeous from what I can see in here. Oh, it's so it looks firm. like a sail. Feel the thickness of it. It's awesome. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. huh. Yep. So, as always, boat projects never end. No, we have a bunch to do too. We've been piling yeah. them up, waiting for a, a window to do that stuff. So. Yeah. And now the pile's getting too big and it's time to really get it yeah. done. <laughs> yeah, we got some jobs to do. Yeah. I'm excited well. though. Anyways, more on that later. Woo!
started trying to run the extrusion, extrusion up the forest day and we ran into a bit of a problem because you're supposed to put the mast down to do this and then fish the wire through. We're we trying to do it without stepping the mast. Yes. So we had to come up with an idea of how we were going to get this flimsy wire into a flimsy piece of plastic. And run it up 30 feet. Yes, without it falling on our head. So we, were, so we ran a <laughs> messenger line through the extrusion. Mm -hmm. We're going to gorilla tape it onto the end of the forestay. And then we're going to pull it through and pull the extrusion all the way up. First, we're doing this to make sure that it's the, cut to the right length. Yes. If it is, we're going to have to pull it back through. Do it again. Do it again. And start piecing it together. Yes. I feel like a cat. All we're doing is playing with strings today. <laughs> <laughs> So we have to run another messenger line that our sail is going to run up this end of the extrusion before we put it up on the stay. Like we said a minute ago, we still don't know if the extrusion, extrusion is the right length. So we might have to pull all this down and do it over again, but if it's perfect, then it's a one-time shot. So we're going with it. Uh, yeah, I think one of us on top. So we've run our two lines now. We have a messenger line that's gonna pull our forestay through, and we have a second messenger line that will pull our halyard through and pull our sail up once we're mounted. The kicker is, if the extrusion is cut to the wrong length, we're doing this whole process again, everything's coming down, we'll have to cut it shorter, we'll be able to measure it at least, cut it shorter, then run all this stuff again, run it back up. So that didn't work. Um, obviously it is way too long and we have to cut it. Now we're hoping that our sail isn't too long for our boat and they didn't give us too big of a sail. We're a bit worried about that. So we decided to take the sail out of the bag, put it along the extrusion to see, uh, measure, it measure it out that way and then uh, cut from there. So round two. messenger lines we have two of them We've trimmed our extrusion it's the right length now we got our one messenger line that's gonna pull our four stay back through the extrusion we're using a nice wide strip of gorilla tape because we don't want it to come apart again nope and it's gonna hold the two together so that we can pull the cable through the extrusion and push the extrusion up which is like a it's trying to stand a, a wet noodle straight up yeah so it's got challenges for sure <laughs> and it's fun because we've had to really sleuth out some ideas or sleuth we had to figure out some ideas of how to make this whole thing work so yeah kind of impressed with what we've come up with me so. too in the end we had to cut this much off of it it was just too long otherwise this whole process would have been a lot quicker but we managed to do it without taking the mask down which is awesome we got our messenger line run through that's the green one here. That's gonna pull. We're gonna attach that to the top of the sail, uh, to the halyard actually. And then we're gonna start feeding the halyard through, which will pull the sail all the way up. That one will come right down and we'll be able to tie down the uh, top of the sail like that. Tie the bottom of the sail here, run our sheets out, and then we can furl this sucker in. <laughs> I'm so excited. Me too. Yeah. You know, the only crabby thing is, is yeah. we, we laid the, uh, to oh. measure the furler, we laid the, our brand new beautiful white sail out on the dock here and it's, and it's covered dirty. in dirt and crap. But it wipes off easy. So as we put it up, we'll we're going to give it a wipe um, and then it'll be okay. Yeah, it's so crunchy and awesome. Yeah. Yes. It's fresh. So this is a classic example of understanding the directions before you get started. Yeah, you know what? It just makes us perfect. Yes. Yeah. 
Little things done well <laughs> over a long period of time. It's perfection. Yeah. So we screwed up on our halyard um, and how the messenger line for that was supposed to go. We didn't quite understand what the whole process of that was. Uh, unfortunately, you have to feed the actual halyard that's going to stay up this little tube here and then start it down this side and then your messenger goes on this side to pull the whole thing up and around and we just thought that it was pulling it up to the top like the regular halyard does. So we, we need to, to take, take it, all it all apart and do it all over again from the beginning. But we're good at it now. We know how to do it pretty good. Third so. time's a charm. <laughs> we got this baby. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, well, uh, was it third, fourth time's a charm? Fourth time's a charm, babe. We got her all figured out. We got it reinstalled. And we are just running our halyard now. Mara's tying that up to the top of our sail, and we're going to start hoisting it up. And with any luck, it fits like a glove. So, yeah. We've run our. Uh, spooled up our furler line and run it to the back for now so once we get this jib completely all the way up then we can start pulling it in and tightening it back up and just see how it looks so excited i'm so excited i'm Here so excited go. this thing's beautiful and crunchy it's awesome yeah. here we go let's get it up well project number one for the day done <laughs> that took all day what time uh, are we at here uh, it is almost three o'clock. Wow. We've been at it since 10. Yeah, we have a couple other jobs we wanted to do too, but we'll see. They might be nighttime jobs. Yeah. We got to still attach the sheets, yeah. which we're going to go buy some new rope from the uh, yacht club here. We'll attach those and then clean up our mess from this job. Maybe, Maybe take get a something little... to eat. Yeah. That'd be nice. Maybe a cannonball. I'm hot. Yeah. All right, let's take a break. But we did it. We have a rolling furler. Yeah, it's, it's exciting. Awesome. And the sail's beautiful. Yeah. So, Manx precision, a couple of little non-precision things that we had to deal with. But, yeah. But overall, good experience. It's beautiful. And yeah. we're happy to have it on here. So, we are. thank you. I can't wait to try it out. I know, same. Here we go. We had some excitement the other day. We were coming into park and uh, Tamara was on the front with the uh, grab stick and uh, I throttled back and I clicked it out of gear and the engine idle stayed really, really high. And uh, I looked back, I'm like, oh no, I hope that's not what happened. And it was kind of uh, stormy a bit too, so it was a bit bumpy. And one of the uh, cables going to the motor from the binnacle cracked and snapped. So I seen that they had worn out and uh, we had ordered replacement ones. But I just wanted to show you guys real quick. So I quickly, we were able to grab the ball and stuff. I just reached in and, and uh, manually operated the throttle and just clicked it into gear and we were fine. But uh, I didn't film this and I should have. It was a little bit of a process winding this stuff back through, but check these out. It's nice and clean now. Part of what you see on most of them is when the motor's tilting up, just the way this is designed, there's a whole lot of pressure on these cables and they bend up. And the old Teleflex cables that were in there, they got pinched up. So as the motor was coming up like this, these would bend and flex right here, and that would create a weak point. And then so the throttle was sticking and they were cracked and they were the original ones and they'd last a long time. So I did a lot of research on it and reading and stuff. Cables are way better now than when the original ones were put in here and they're, they're turning, their bend radius is much greater. So these are some ones that I got from Yamaha and they are the uh, Premier 2 see right there and they are super flexible and I also ordered them about a foot longer so there was 13s in here before and I put 14s in to give it a little bit more room and you can see I put a bit of a bow in here they used to come out like this and turn in and they rested on the turning bar the tie bar for the rudders but look how flexible these are so when the motors completely trimmed up now there's no pressure on those. And I think just that little extra radius that came in here makes all the difference. But this is so much better and it feels so good to shift now. So I have a couple adjustments to do because I could see that we're not hitting wide open throttle either when I'm full full throttle on the binnacle. 
So I'm gonna pop that off in a little bit, and then I think I gotta tighten up the throttle cable. Shifter cable is perfect. It's nailed, and we nailed it on that one, but I think I gotta tighten that one up a bit because you have to push it pretty far forward before it actually engages. So I'm gonna play with that in a minute here. Uh, just a little adjustment, but we just wanted to share that with you. And anyone else who has a McGregor uh, will know that this is a bit of a sore spot, but these cables and that length are perfect. It's a hot one. So we're getting lots done here today. And uh, being that we're, we're on the dock here, we have access to stuff. It's been pretty handy. So we got the uh, furler finished and installed. Tamara's just running uh, some, organizing some sheets and some lines there. And there was another little project I wanted to do while we were here. So I find the controller for our solar charger a little cumbersome sometimes. I, I feel like it works, but it doesn't give me an accurate readout what's left in our battery bank. So I ordered this cool little uh, voltmeter. It's got a main and an auxiliary switch. Um, so it'll show me two battery banks. And it's a simple three wires, common ground, two, two uh, positives, one to each battery bank. So I'm just gonna drill a hole set it up and and it will give us our power at all times for each one and i kind of think that that's sort of what we need so i'm going to go ahead and drill a couple holes and fasten this thing in and see how it looks awesome it's nice having an inverter on board because you can run things like a drill but drilling fiberglass on board when you're living on it sucks so the other thing that's nice to have is a Dyson. So I'm going to get that out. I'll get Tamara to stick it right underneath here and we'll suck up all the fiberglass as I start chewing through this so we can put our gauge back on. Ah, look at this. So it's kind of hard. It's flickering because it's LED but uh, on the camera, but it looks great. So my main battery bank has 12.9 volts. My auxiliary is drying, it's sitting at 11.6 right now. And uh, it's got everything running off of it. So it's hot in here as you can see. But that little job's done. I've been wanting to do that for a bit. So glad I got it completed. I need to go for a swim, holy crap. Hi babe. Hi buddy. What are you making here? I am making our deck of our boat wood. It's nice. Yes. So part of what's been happening when you're crawling around on here grabbing mooring balls and whatever. My knees are getting wrecked and so, it hurts so bad. So we love this stuff so much in the cockpit and on the inside. We decided we had another roll. Let's get the whole front part where we're cruising around on too. This stuff's grippy. It's easy to keep clean and it saves your knees and skin so much from crawling it does. around. It's so nice. So we'll show you how it looks when we're finished, but. I think it's gonna be wicked. I love it's it. So, so far. fancy. Yeah. It's been so nice having this opportunity to be able to get a slip at the yacht club. Uh, they've been absolutely awesome to us. Whenever we've uh, messaged in to get a reciprocal slip, they've always found something for us. And there's no way that we could have ever gotten all of these boat jobs done if we were uh, tied up to a mooring ball somewhere, like on a camping mooring ball. It's nice having the docks here. I mean, we couldn't have done any of this if we were doing it that way. So a huge shout out to the Kelowna Yacht Club for definitely being 100% accommodating and totally helping us out right now. Oh my God, we're done. What a day. Sun's, it has been so busy today. Sun's going down in a smoky sky. Yeah. It was a beautiful day today. It really was. We, we couldn't out. have asked for a better day awesome. to get all this stuff done. It was hot. Yeah. But we now have a brand new 115 jib with a roller furler set up, CDI roller furler. Thank you, Precision Sales. Yeah. It's beautiful. We it's can't so wait beautiful. to actually get out and use this sucker now. Yeah. We're so excited. Tomorrow, baby. Yep. <laughs> and then we completed this. We got comfy decking. Make some happy knees. The happy knees. <laughs> I am so excited. We're not going to slip on the deck anymore. It's going to be so much nicer to get up here grabbing a mooring ball and all of that kind of stuff. And when we just want to sit on the bow of the boat, it's going to be comfortable. Totally. So we have something else coming for that too, but stay that's, tuned. That's You'll a, see. Yeah, another little project. Yeah. But it turned out really good. Yeah, we're pretty happy with how all of it's gone. And then we thought we'd add these guys here because this is a your 
another step up and so it just gives it a little bit more grippiness which is awesome so totally. it's time to clean this mess up have a shower clean ourselves up and get some food I'm we're starving totally we've given her we put in a shift today i don't we even did. know what time it is but no, it's late it's really late yeah sundowner time baby it is uh, that sunset looks crazy with all that smoke. Oh it my does. God. I guess that's the one bonus of the fires is the beautiful sunsets that we get from it, but that's the only bonus that comes from yeah. the fire. Man, everything was covered in soot when we got on here. Yeah. Ash everywhere. So gross. Yeah, and we just cleaned it the other day too. Mm -hmm. Anyway, there that's a first world problem. There's people that are losing their homes and yards yes. and evacuated and I feel bad for them. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. But <sighs> We're done. Cheers. Cheers. Sitting, relaxing, enjoying the sunset. We got it all done in time. And we did. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Haunted Time. It's uh, It was been things that we've been trying to figure out how to get done for a long time. Mm -hmm. And it was nice to just tick it off and get it done today. And it was great that all the stuff showed up finally. We've been keeping that a secret that we've got this roller furler coming. And yeah. It's a huge upgrade on a boat. It's the first thing you should upgrade on a boat that doesn't have one. 100%. When you are wrestling with that sail and putting it up and dragging it up and it's a mess on the front where this is so clean and awesome. I'm so excited. Yeah. And it's a 115, so it's a little bit bigger. We should be able to get a little more performance out of it. I'm super excited. Me too. Easier to reef, safer. It's just all around better. Yeah. So. We just have to get some blocks. Yeah. Um, for proper, for the proper furler, but we're That's, almost there. We're almost there. Yeah. Almost there. Anyways. Anyway, what were we saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we get lost. I know. Oh, we God. like to talk. We like to talk. Uh, if you haven't Shit. noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Uh, click the notification bell so you get an update whenever we have a new episode. And pop us some comments. Tell us what you think about the new decking. We want to go all the way back, but we think it might be too much. So what do you think? I don't know. Pardon me. That's okay. I'm so thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do that again? No. You See like you next that? week. Bye, guys. <laughs>